Ever wonder what it would be like to be the person listening to you on the phone? I can't simulate that for you, but you can simulate what it would be like listening to me. As in, what if I shared information that you can't see? And why might I use speech strategies over the phone that I wouldn't use or recommend in person? I've divided the simulation into three steps. The first step is to clarify commonly used words. To begin, I'm gonna have you close your eyes and you can guess what do you think I'm trying to say? The first step. Now I'm gonna show you choices so that you can guess what do you think I'm gonna say. I'll say it again, the first step. Again, the first step. If you guessed option A, the first step. To say this clear over the phone, I would spend more time on the main vowel for that word first. I would also use a true T. You'd hear like a puff of air, first. The first step. Go ahead and try this using those techniques. Now close your eyes and guess, what do you think I'm saying this time? Your choices are black or white. Your choices are black or white. I was trying to say B. I know that one was very confusing. For this one, I would spend more time, I'm using my arm to indicate how long, R and OR. Your choices are black or white. That word or, when it's reduced, is very similar to the word and, or an. So I would spend more time on that. Go ahead and try this, especially for that word or. Close your eyes. Police are almost there. Police are almost there. It was choice A. I know the second one was a bit humorous. I would use more time for that common word R and a true T as in almost. Police are almost there. Try this one. Now close your eyes. That's right, but there's an air. That's right, but there's an air. It was option B, although it probably sounded more like option A. I would definitely use a true T for that word, but. And I would spend more time for the words, but, sorry, but and air. That's right, but there's an air. Try this for this one. Close your eyes. It's not okay. It's not okay. I was trying to say the negative version as in choice C. I would definitely use a true T anytime I was using a negative over the phone. Not. It's not okay. Sorry about that pause. It's not okay. Use those techniques as you say this example. Next one, close your eyes. Don't set it up. Don't set it up. Option C, which sounds a lot like A and B, I'm sure to you. So I definitely would want to get that true T in there. Don't. And more time on that main vowel. Don't. Don't set it up. Give this one a try. Close your eyes. You can or can't go. You can or can't go. It was option A. So I would spend more time on the main vowel to contrast those words, can or can't, and use a true T, because that's the big difference with those words. Can't. You can or can't go. Try this one, contrasting those words. Close your eyes. 
the staff aren't sure. The staff aren't sure. It was the negative version that aren't. So I would use a true T if I was over the phone and more time on that word are, aren't. The staff aren't sure. Try this one. Okay, ready? Close your eyes. All parts weren't returned. All parts weren't returned. Again, another negative, I would definitely use a true T, weren't. And more time on that main vowel, weren't. All parts weren't returned. Go ahead and try this one. Close your eyes. Last one, neither of those. Neither of those. I would spend more time on the main vowels for the words neither and those. Neither of those. Give that one a try. So quick takeaway. To clarify commonly used words, these are words that are often reduced or even omitted when we're speaking face to face. Over the phone, I would spend more time on those main vowel sounds for those words, and I would definitely use true T's especially to contrast words that are negative. Can't or won't, for example. Step two, this is the smart way to simplify information. Suppose someone's on the phone with me listening and I share the following. There's a flight leaving Toronto heading to New York at 8 p.m. with no stops, price at full fare. And that listener asks me to say it again slowly. There's a flight leaving Toronto heading to New York at 8 p.m. Eastern time with no stops priced at full fare. And the person asks me to repeat it, the whole thing again. This time, I break it into chunks. So I divide it so that bits of information go together. And it sounds like this. There's a flight leaving Toronto, heading to New York at 8 p.m. Eastern time with no stops, priced at full fare. By pausing, I'm checking in with the listener. Did you get that part? Do you want me to repeat just that last bit? That saves me from repeating the entire thing and wasting both of our precious time. Over to you to try sharing information similar to the way that I did, breaking it into chunks that go together. This time, I'm gonna say a greeting in two ways. I want you to think about, as my listener, how is the first greeting coming across? And you can always turn away or close your eyes as I say this. Hi, Carrie here from English for Heroes. How may I help you? You might be thinking, I don't think she's really interested in helping me. Now notice the second time that I say it. How does it make you feel? Hi, Carrie here from English for Heroes. How may I help you? You're gonna get a chance to try this. Begin with any greeting you'd like, state your name, the name of any company you can think of, and then a question that you might ask over the phone. So the takeaway there is we're often asked to repeat and say it slower. I think what's really helpful though is to first divide your information up into chunks, units of information that go together. And that way then when you're pausing, 
and you're asked for repetition, you'll only be repeating that last bit or chunk that you just said. Step three is clarifying numbers. Close your eyes and guess which numbers do you think I'm about to say? $15, 18 minutes, 50 milligrams, your number 60. I'm gonna go over how I could have said those numbers even more clearly, especially if they were important for you as my listener. The contrast numbers in the teens versus in the tens, I would put the stress on the teen for numbers like 15, 16, 18. And for numbers in the tens, I would stress the beginning. So like 50, 60, 80. I could also use a true T sound for numbers in the teens, 15, 18. And I could use a soft D or a flap sound for numbers in the tens, like 50, 60, 80. A couple more tips before our number pronunciation quiz. When you're referring to the number zero, refer to it that way instead of O. So if I was saying six, zero, seven, zero, it's less confusing with a letter. For number 20, I would use a true T, 20 versus that vanishing 20, 20, sorry, 25, 28, 29. Whenever I was comparing numbers in the teens, for example, 13, 15, 17, I would stress the beginning of those numbers. It's not the teen part that we need to contrast there. So it would look like 13, 19, 18, 15. And if I was referring to numbers in the tens that were of the same tens, I would stress the end of the numbers. For example, 55, 58, 53. It's that latter part that's going to be most important to tell those numbers apart. For the quiz, I'm going to show you some numbers. I'm not going to say them first. I just want you to go through and name all the numbers you see down, starting with, I think it's number four, zero. Go all the way down and then go to the other column and go all the way down them. And then I'll go over the tips that I would use if I was sharing those over the phone. So start on this column and go down and then this column and go down. For that first number, if it was by itself, I would stress the first syllable, 40. I'm trying to contrast it with the number 14. If I had two numbers like 46 and 47 next to each other, I would stress the end of those, 46 or 47. And 14, I would contrast the end if that number was by itself, 14 to contrast it from number 40. If I had two teens together, I would stress the beginning parts, 13 to 17. That year, 20 to 20, 2021, I would use a true T sound, the year 2021. And this number, 503, I would refer to it as 503 over the phone. For this long number, I would stress the beginning of 99 to contrast it with the end number 19. However, I probably also would stress the nine. So it would sound like 99,019. How'd you do on that quiz?